coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. Big Money Won by Drone Racer. Astronaut and Pilot Design Drone Controller Introduced. And Drones to Deliver Vaccines in Vanuatu. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. Imagine being a 15-year-old drone racer from Australia. And now imagine that you're in China to win a $24,000 check. The new World Drone Racing Champion was announced after four days of competition at an event organized by the FAI's World Air Sports Federation, running from November 1st through 4th, 2018. Finishing at the top in a field of 127 drone racers from 34 countries, Rudy Browning walked away from the experience clutching a $24,000 cash prize. The drone racing pilots and their crews traveled to Shenzhen, a city near Hong Kong that labels itself as China's Silicon Valley, to compete against each other for team and individual FAI medals during the first ever FAI World Drone Racing Championships. Host nation, the People's Republic of China, fielded the biggest team, with eight competitors, including three wildcard competitors. Browning told the media that I dreamed of this, and it's incredible that has come true. I couldn't be happier. In addition to Rudy's top showing, team medals were awarded, with gold going to Australia, the silver to Sweden, and the bronze went to the Republic of Korea. The competition was streamed live online, and also broadcast to television audiences across Asia. In the next John Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. As noted, we have our ace drone test pilot Casey Seelog evaluating the Mavic 2 Pro, which we figure he liked because he's already bought one for himself. During a shoot over the Columbia River Gorge, Casey had the chance to check out the video capabilities of DJI's newest offering. Casey told us the samples you're seeing were just a quick post of some raw footage shot in Columbia River Gorge this week after work. Got in the air just before sunset, absolutely amazed at what the Mavic 2 Pro captures. Definitely need to spend some more time working with this quad. Expect bigger and better videos. Much more info to follow. DJI, during their third annual Airworks Enterprise Drone Conference, showcased new hardware, software, and strategic partnerships. During their Airworks 2018 keynote address, DJI announced major new steps to enhance the usefulness of the DJI flight platform. They debuted the Mavic 2 Enterprise, their latest commercial drone. They also unveiled a realistic new DJI flight simulator, which helps equip new drone pilots with skills for a new era of work. DJI also launched the official version of DJI Pilot, its flight control app designed for professionals. Flight Safety International is now offering training for the Part 107 Remote Pilot License Written Test. This e-learning course is designed to help those who seek to obtain an FAA Commercial Remote Pilot License to be fully prepared for the exam. In addition to these e-learning courses, Flight Safety will begin delivery of practical flight training for drones in January 2019 at learning centers across the United States. These practical courses will include an Advanced Remote Pilot Proficiency Series, Course 1 and Course 2, with industry-specific courses following soon thereafter. Zero Zero Robotics was featured last year in an Aero News video, after we had the chance to check out their unique Hover Camera Passport flying camera system. 
Now ZZR is teasing one and all with a few short glimpses of what they call the Hover 2. The teaser video indicates that the Hover 2 is a serious upgrade over previous products, but we'll have to wait until November 14th to get the full details. We'll fill you in shortly. That was our drone minute, now back to the rest of the news. Drone pilots from commercial experts to novices may now increase their flight precision and improve their image and video quality with a first-of-its-kind single-handed controller from Fluidity Technologies. The FT Aviator drone controller was designed by former NASA astronaut Scott Parazinski. Unlike traditional controllers, which most closely resembles a gaming controller with a complex two-thumb control design, the FT Aviator intuitively unlocks the human potential to fly a drone with a more natural and exacting way of piloting. Its ergonomic design incorporates the drone-relevant four degrees of freedom through space, eliminating the awkward interface and steeper learning curve of existing dual-handed drone control as well as providing tactile and visual feedback. The controller also brings the most important camera functions to the controller, versus having them buried deep in an app. The controller has dedicated buttons to control the rate of tilt on the fly, as well as other commonly accessed camera functions, such as shutter speed, exposure compensation, and even zoom to create smoother video sequences. The FT Aviator is currently compatible with nearly all DJI drones and will be available for purchase on Kickstarter. The FT Aviator is expected to retail for $499, but is also available for pre-order for $225. It is expected to ship in early quarter 1 of 2019. Drones continue to have a positive effect on the world around us though the general media seems to love to mention as much as they might. The government of Vanuatu has signed agreements with two companies for a demonstration project to deliver vaccines to 39 remote villages in the country. The vaccines are temperature sensitive and often take days to deliver to remote villages in the island nation. There are 83 islands in the Vanuatuan archipelago. Only about a third of the country is accessible by road or air. While the test flights were described as hugely exciting by UNICEF Field Office Chief Andrew Parker, they also carried significant risk. The drones could be lost at sea or might alarm local people not accustomed to seeing such technology. The terrain on many of the islands is mountainous and is subject to tropical storms and high winds. UNICEF and government staff have spent a lot of time working with the people to make them comfortable with them taking off and landing in their villages. Parker said if the vaccine test is successful, the trials could be expanded to delivery of blood and other medical supplies. Well, that's our program for this week. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And in addition to this program are Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.